it's not the sum of Chicago Symphony. It's not the sum of Louisville Orchestra. It's the Louisville Orchestra, the Chicago Symphony, the New York Philharmonic. It should serve the entirety of that community. Hello, everybody, and welcome to WFMT's Performer Introduction Series, where we're going behind the scenes of performers before they hit some of Chicago's biggest stages this summer. Today, we are with a featured conductor, composer, and multi-instrumentalist, Teddy Abrams. He will be leading the Chicago Symphony Orchestra through a series of Leonard Bernstein pieces Oh, yeah, this is really a huge, huge honor, especially in a year like this, getting to conduct at, at Ravinia, which is a legendary uh, venue, legendary place to make music and with the Chicago Symphony, which is, uh, I mean, something I don't need to tell Chicago listeners, but one of the greatest orchestras in the world. My, my father is from Chicago, and I still have a lot of relatives there, and he grew up going to Ravinia. Uh, that those were his first experiences getting to see the Chicago Symphony, and so I I grew up hearing about that and uh, knowing what a what a legendary place this is, and so uh, I can't wait to be there. That's so cool to hear how everything's kind of come full circle for you now. Now, I'd like to take a few minutes at the beginning of our interview to show you off for people who don't know you yet. At the age of 34, you're the conductor of a major symphony orchestra. You've written a rap opera about Muhammad Ali. You've performed for the NPR Tiny Desk concert. The list goes on and on and on. If you had to kind of bring it back and choose a single event or a favorite memory that might have kick-started your love for music and your incredible career... What event or memory first comes to mind for you? I think there were there were a couple of moments early on for me. I remember there was a time when I was choosing an instrument and uh, to show us what a what a band was when we were in second grade. They brought in another school's band to say, "Hey, this is an example of what a a high functioning elementary school band sounds like." And I don't know what it really sounded like objectively, but I know that hearing this visiting elementary school band it might, it might as well have been the Vienna Philharmonic. Uh, it might as well have been like, you know, the Beatles. Whatever it was, was so powerful that every kid signed up for man that day. And that still ranks as one of the best performances I've ever seen in my memory. And is just a reminder of, of the, the importance of sharing, the importance of building those musical relationships, the person to person power in that moment of, of making these second graders uh, in, inspired enough to all sign up for instruments. I've never forgotten that. The importance of, of education and sharing with, with kids and, and the devotion to, uh, to the next generation of not only musicians, but music lovers is actually the highest, I think, priority for, for artists. I've, I've always considered that because that's when you, you can transform people's lives and they're, they're, people are so open to that, that possibility. We become much har more hardened as adults and, and it takes a lot more to crack through all the, the barriers we've put up, but kids are open to a transformational uh, uh, moment. That reminds me of a quote, actually, that I have pulled up here from a WFMT interview you did in 2020, where the subject was classical crossover. And you said it was important to me to find support from non-classical musicians and for them to see the orchestra as a platform on which they could participate. This, of course, talking about your work with the Louisville Orchestra. But I thought that quote just right here in this point in our conversation is so fitting. And I'd like you, if possible, to expand on that a little bit more. Why do you think it's so important for especially non-classical and classical musicians to be able to share a stage together in the orchestra hall and in the work that you do in general? Well, I really don't like the barriers that we've uh, constructed for ourselves in the music world and especially the so-called classical music world. Um, that, that term classical has been very divisive and it's also extremely nebulous. So those are two dangerous things that coincide when you have something that creates division and, and projects a kind of us versus them mentality. The whole idea of an orchestra is that it's a public facing institution that serves the entire city. It's not the sum of Chicago Symphony, it's not the sum of Louisville Orchestra, it's the Louisville Orchestra, the Chicago Symphony, the New York Philharmonic, it should serve the entirety of that community. And if you're divorcing uh, uh, people from place and people from, from stage, then why are we making this music? Who is it really for? Leonard Bernstein is one of the best examples of somebody that, that did not have any respect for those walls and barriers. This is a person that as a young man is conducting some of the, the greatest orchestras on the planet and is also writing 
music derived from every possible source. You know, you, you, you have Eastern European Jewish influences, you have Latin American music influences, you have jazz and every kind of, of, of popular idiom reflected in Bernstein's being. The, the idea of, of, of having great talent meet the, the orchestra and, and us building new things together is something I've really wanted to pursue. Wonderful. Um, and the segment coming up on Saturday is, of course, called uh, Unboxing Bernstein. So what is it about this legendary musical icon that draws you to his work? And is there anything you'd like to say to the people who maybe know the name Bernstein, but aren't exactly sure if they want to come out and see a concert all about Bernstein? Well, Bernstein is is one of I think America's great heroes. And I, I really, I really believe that not just cultural heroes, but he represents in so many ways, the very best of what, what our country can be. And an American musician who is yes, working in a traditionally European and a white European art form who basically says that he's going to make the music that he wants to make. He's going to be open to the, the, the music all around him, especially as a, you know, an iconic New Yorker, which is what you know, Bernstein, although he was, a, I think, a citizen of the world. And, and just breaking down all the musical barriers and all the rules that would have been expected out of a, out of a young classical musician on a certain trajectory. It continued his entire life. He kept on breaking down the, the expectations uh, and, and creating new musical forms and new means of communicating with, with people. He almost single-handedly created the modern idea of what arts organizations should be doing with education. Back in, in the early part of the 20th century, a kid's concert was just like a shortened, uh, uh, or maybe like, you know, uh, uh, a kind of uh, potpourri of, of orchestral works. There was no fun educational element. There was no like, you know, creative stance as to how a little bit of boogie woogie, which is, you know, what Bernstein would do on stage could connect to a piece that, you know, Beethoven had written towards the end of his life. Nobody was doing cool stuff like that. And, and just, it was, he was always on the front end of everything creative. And that's a model that I think is so spectacular. I mean, even the idea of writing West Side Story and you know, creating the, the kind of music that reflected the actual people involved in the, in, in the work, it's just outrageous. I mean, and, and Candy being this like mashup of, of kind of like comic opera, which has a you know, multi-hundred year history in Paris, uh, uh, combined with like a, a, an American jazzy style, almost just brilliant. The guy was a hero. This has been conductor Teddy Abrams, who will be making his CSO debut at Ravinia this Saturday alongside the lovely Chicago Symphony Orchestra. Thank you so much, Teddy. I can't wait to see you all there.